you know what uh, International Phonetic Alphabet is? No. IPA? So if you look in a dictionary, uh, they'll have the pronunciation of a word and written in like kind of funny letters. That's basically International mm -hmm. Phonetic Alphabet. So it's it, it's an alphabet that is pretty much exclusively used for writing down pronunciations of individual words in dictionaries. Mm -hmm. And you can ask an LLM to write you a recipe uh, for like making some meal in International Phonetic <laughs> Alphabet, and it will do it. Right. And that's like like holy crap! Like that is definitely not something that is uh, that it has ever seen because. IPA is only ever used for writing down right. pronunciations of individual words. So that's 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 compositional generalization. It's, yeah. it's putting together things you've seen like that in new ways. And it's like you know, arguably, there's nothing like profoundly new here because like yes, you've seen different words written in that way, but you figured out that now you can compose the words in this other language the same way yeah. uh, that you've composed words uh, in English. So um, that's actually where the emergent capabilities come from, and because of this. In principle, if we have a sufficient diversity of behaviors, the model should figure out that those behaviors can be composed in new ways uh, as the uh, situation calls for it. And we've actually seen things, even with our current models, which, you know, I should say that I think they're in the grand scheme of things, like looking back five years from now, we'll probably think that these are tiny in scale. But we've already seen what I would call emergent capabilities. When we were playing around with some of our laundry folding policies, actually we discovered this by accident, uh, the robot accidentally picked up two t-shirts out of the bin instead of one, starts folding the first one, the other one gets in the way, picks up the other one, throws it back in the bin. Mm. And we're like, we, we didn't know we didn't know it would do that. Like, yeah. holy crap. And then we tried to play around with it, and it's like, yep, it does that every time. Like, you can drop in, you know, it's, it's doing its work, drop something else on the table, just pick it up, put it back, uh. right? Okay, that's cool. Uh, shopping bag, it starts putting things in the shopping bag. The shopping bag tips over, it picks it back, back up and stands it upright. Mm. We didn't we didn't tell anybody yeah. to collect data for that. I'm sure somebody accidentally at some point or maybe intentionally picked up the shopping bag, but it's just you have this kind of compositionality that emerges when you do learning at scale, and that's really uh, where all these remarkable capabilities come yeah. from. And now you put that together with language, you put that together with uh, all sorts of chain of thought reasoning, and there's a lot of potential for the model to compose things in new ways. Right. I had an example like this when I got a tour of the um, robots, by the way, at your um, office. So it was folding shorts, and I don't know if there was an episode like this in the um, in the training set, but just for fun, I... Like took one of the shorts and like uh, turned it inside out, mm -hmm. and then it was able to understand that it first needed to get. So first of all, just, the grippers are just like like this, like two yes. two limbs, um, or just like opposable finger and thumb like thing. And um, it's actually shocking how much you can do with just that. Yeah, it understood that it first needed to fold it inside out before folding it correctly. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.